Hello. This is an impromptu let's make a character. I'm calling it let's make a character on a whim. And I decided I wanted to do a stream tonight, so that's what I'm going to do. And uh, I'm just going to jump right into it. Uh, I'm going to be making a GURPS after the end character. Um, and in fact, I'm going to be making basically the same character that I made last time in All Flesh Must Be Eaten, only I'm going to be making him in uh, GURPS. Uh, GURPS after the end is uh, one of the newest uh, GURPS uh, supplements in their, uh, what they call a, a worked genre example. Um, and it's for the post-apocalyptic genre. And the... Uh, the book includes templates, so that's what I'm going to be using to make this. So like I did with Dungeon Fantasy uh, in a previous episode, I'm going to be using the template uh, for, in this case, the Scavenger. Um, these templates are built on 150 points. 150 points in GURPS 4th Edition is considered sort of the low end of uh, heroic Um so this this is somebody who can, you know, hold their own but isn't really like a a, a superhero or a or um or or an action movie star. But uh like I did with uh the Dungeon Fantasy, I'm going to copy the template into my text file so I can play around with it easier. And since this is a uh, impromptu, uh, I didn't run any polls or anything, so this is just an idea that came to me because I wanted to do a stream tonight. So I'm mostly just going to be running through this. Uh, might not be giving as much play-by-play -play, because I've already done a GURPS character from a template. Um, and it kind of all looks the same. But uh, if anything pops out at me, I am going to uh, to discuss it a bit. Uh, apparently, someone is watching. Uh, if you're watching, go ahead and say hi in the chat room. Um, so this scavenger character uh, starts out with uh, strength 11, which is, you know, Average or, or a little above average. Dex 13, which is uh, uh, quite good. And then IQ and, and uh, health both at 11 as well. Um, and the uh, various secondary attributes are also calculated out. That's what, temp that's what templates are good for. Now, the thing on this template that you might not recognize if you haven't read GURPS After the End is right here at the end of the, uh, the secondary characteristics. Um, there's a new secondary characteristic called RP, and those are radiation points. Um, in After the End, they provide a simplified system for tracking radiation and the effects of radiation exposure um, that makes it work basically like, uh, like hit points or fatigue points. Um, so that as you, uh, as you're affected by radiation, um, you take radiation points kind of like damage and at various, uh, break points, different effects happen to you instead of having, uh, cert charts and things, uh, tables and things like they have in the full rules. Uh, I, I, I really like it. I think it's a, a, a neat streamlined system. Um, and, uh, so I wanted to point that out when I was working on this character. So first thing I'm going to go, I'm going to look at is the advantages section. Um, I'm not going to cleave too closely to what uh, I did in the, the all flesh must be eaten character. I was just taking that idea as a starting point um, to help me pick what template I was going to work with. So I'm not going to go back and be referencing that character sheet. Um, for specific traits or anything. 
So I'm just going to be making this character from the template just based on what I what I think they should have um, in in GURPS. Um, so looking at advantages, I'm going to bring this up here because it's pertinent to the advantages section. Um, one of the advantage options is uh, craftiness, which is a talent. Um, and I, I described in the Dungeon Fantasy episode, a talent is an advantage that gives a bonus to a group of related skills. In this case, craftiness is sort of um, like the uh, the spy talent. So it gives bonuses to acting, camouflage, disguise, holdout, which is the ability to hide things on your person. Um, so that if somebody is searching you, they won't find them. Shadowing, which is following someone without them noticing you. And stealth, which is more uh, regular uh, wandering around being un unnoticed. Um, and I'm looking at that. I'm thinking possibly, I've got 30 points to spend. I'm thinking possibly taking one level of that. So I'm going to go ahead and write down crafting this one. Because it's only five points per level. Um, and I like the idea of this, this guy being good at, um, hiding and sneaking around, um, almost like a, like a fantasy thief. Um, I'm just, I'm just reading over the, uh, the advantages section, uh, before I, before I make any other decisions. So one thing in here is uh, the the radiation points. You can buy additional levels, and they only cost one point per level, um, which is uh, possibly a good idea um, in this case. I'm actually going to switch to the uh, section in the PDF that describes radiation points. Technically, I guess it's radiation threshold points, but seriously, it's RP, it's radiation points. Um, excuse me. <coughs> I'm, uh, I'm getting over a cold. I was away last week, which is why there wasn't any show last week, and I got sick, and I'm still getting over it, so I may be coughing or uh, pausing to blow my nose in the middle of this, but you can just enjoy it. Uh... So radiation points uh, or radiation threshold points can be raised to a maximum of the character's strength plus health um, for one point per level. Uh, so in this case, right now, that could go up to 22. Um, I am going to... I'm going to take five extra radiation points for now. Uh, for five points, just because this is a this is a, this isn't a, a nuclear post-apocalypse, so um, it's probably a good idea to be a little more resistant to radiation. Um, so that leaves me twenty points left to whoop mutations. Getting ahead of myself. Um, twenty points left to to spend in the advantages section. Um, so I like the idea of uh, gizmos. The gizmo advantage is a fun one in, uh, in GURPS. Um, it is basically the ability f to uh, reach into your pocket and pull out something useful a couple of times per session. Um, and in, for, a, for a scavenger, that, that's a fun thing. It's like, you know, you can be like, oh, I found just the thing the other day. And you pull out, you know, whatever you need, a, a, a flip lighter or something. Um I'm sure that they have guidelines in here for how that interacts with uh, the wealth system. I don't recall seeing it, but they may just follow the normal rules in the in the uh, basic set. So the way it is, is uh, it has to be small enough to fit into a coat pocket and it has to meet one of three criteria. Uh, something that you 
own, so it's already on your character sheet, but you didn't specifically say that you were carrying on your person. Um, an item that you probably own and that makes sense for your character to have, but that you hadn't bothered to actually write down on your character sheet. Um, or something that is both uh, inexpensive and widely available. Um, that's going to be the most restrictive uh, criteria in this setting, most likely, because it's a post-apocalypse and everything's, it's about scrounging and everything. But this guy is a scavenger, so I would say that the GM could probably give some leeway. So I'm taking Gizmos 1, so that it basically once per game session, I can reach into my pocket and find something useful. Um... I'm not a gadgeteer, so the extra rules for being a gadgeteer won't come into play. So I've got 15 points left. I think I'm going to take an extra point of strength for 10 and an extra point, an extra level of lifting strength for 3. That leaves me 2 points left. Um, I'm going to take hard to kill because I remember that the other guy had hard to kill. And even though I'm not cleaving too closely to that, I do like the idea of this guy being, being harder to put down. Um, so that fills out my 30 points of advantages. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the rest of that out. Um, So for disadvantages, uh, it's a similar thing to the last uh, GURPS episode I did. There's a number of sections that give lists, and I have to pick from those lists. So uh, first, I have 15 points chosen from this. I, l I love to give characters over confidence, so I'm going to start there. And he's not going to be terribly overconfident. This is one of those ones that has a self-control number. So I'm going to give it a 15, which means it's halved. Um, which means that it goes to 2. Because uh, disadvantages... Well, everything rounds up. Um, with one exception. that um, If you have a negative reputation, that, that rounds down for some reason. Um... So that gives him two points. Um, and I'm going to give him greed. And that also requires a self-control number. And I'm just trying to think what the best way to do this is. So I'm going to give him that at 9, which will make a point value of 22, which already I'm over into my next section because it's minus 15 points from the previous list uh, or this new list. So um, I'm at 24, so I am spent the 15 from the first list. And I'm already uh, nine points into the second list. Um, which means that there's six points left in there. Um, I'm going to take Light Sleeper. This is somebody you know spends a lot of time out in the out in the ruins, so that's learned to wake up at any little sound. And then I'm going to take a uh, sense of duty, and I'm going to specify that it's toward a single other uh, single character. Um, Which 
flipping through the book. Which brings the point cost down to minus two. Thought it was minus one, but it's minus two. Which puts me one point into uh, the next section. So basically, I'm going to be taking a total of minus 45 in disadvantages. Um, so let's see. I'm, instead, I'm going to up that to my teammates, which brings it up to minus 5, which means I'm at total of 34 so I have 11 points left to spend um, he's gonna be a compulsive gambler which also requires a self-control number he's not going to be terribly uh, compulsive about it um, And what's the last one? Bad temper. Why not? This guy's not entirely the best uh, best guy to hang around. That actually puts me at 46 points, but who cares? The GM can uh, can can waive things if they want. So now, skills, right off the bat, I have this whole, this whole list here. Scrounging is kind of what it sounds like, the ability to find useful stuff in the ruins. And they give a whole system for how to do it in uh, GURPS After the End. Uh, search is um, finding things that are specifically hidden. Stealth, clearly. Streetwise is uh, a social skill for dealing with like the underworld elements. And then urban survival is living off of, uh, in this case, it would be living out of the ruins or living um, as a, as a, you know, vagrant in a actual community and then it says pick one of the following 24 point packages um this person is i'm gonna go with the thief package because that ties into the the craftiness that i uh that talent that i took earlier so that gives me filch, which is the ability to steal from a location without being spotted. Pickpocket is the ability to steal off of a person. And then I choose two of this list. So I'm going to give him brawling for a good combat skill. And 15 is pretty darn good. And then I'm going to give a uh, holdout which it says here is going to be at uh, skill 12, but because um, I took craftiness, which gives a bonus, then it'll actually be higher. And I'm actually gonna go back in. Stealth gets that bonus, so it's at a 15. Holdout gets that bonus, so it's at a 13. Um, and then I'll keep an eye out for any of the other ones as we go through the rest of the list. Uh, 
thief also spends six points to add plus two to streetwise. Okay. Then I go on to the secondary skills section. I get Anthropology and Merchant. Those, those are interesting. Interesting skills for this character to have. Anthropology means that you're, uh, you know, it's being able to recognize social structures and, and symbology and stuff. The Science of Evolution and Culture. An anthropologist is knowledgeable in the ways of primitive and not so primitive societies. Well, I guess that fits uh, in a post apocalypse. Um, helps me predict and explain unusual rituals and folk customs. And then, merchant is just a social skill for getting a good deal uh, in trade. Um. I'm going to take, so I picked two from this list. So I'm going to take uh, Survival for Radioactive Wasteland, which is a new or uh, an important uh, specialization in After the End with uh, nuclear uh, apocalypses. I'm going to take Current Affairs Regional, because this guy may not have personally gotten around to a whole bunch of places, but he's definitely talked to people who have. In the next list, I picked two of these combat skills. Um, I'm going to go with knife, because knives are cheap and easy to come by, even in the wasteland. And... I'm going to go with wrestling to complement my crude striking skills. Then I have background skills. Um, camouflage, there's, there's one of those ones that I was looking out for. So I'm going to mark that as being affected by my talent. Raise that skill level up. Um, I'm picking four of these, by the way. I'm going to take Smuggling, which is the ability to hide things, um, typically in a vehicle or... Uh, a location, which I think would be good for this character. Um, let's see, I need two more. Observation, always good time. Useful for noticing things that are out of the ordinary or dangerous. Um, and particularly useful for watching people without them noticing that you're watching them. Oh, I'm going to... I'm, uh, is Disguise? Yeah, Disguise is one of those ones that I was looking out for. So I'm going to take Disguise. And mark it. I'm marking it with the dagger symbol just because that was what was already in the template text for it. Um, and that's so because I am one point over on the um, disadvantages. Um, I am going to spend that instead of instead of being a uh, 100 and um, 
149 point character. I'm going to spend uh, an extra point. Um, on I'm still going to mark down that I'm a 149 point character. Um, hold on, is my math messing up? Let me just go through and double check my math real quick. Quick calculator action. Hmm. Must have missed something somewhere. Cause my math is way off. I'm coming up at 147 points. Oh well, this is an impromptu thing anyway, so I'm not really concerned that I'm I'm not off by that much. And that one was the same. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm just going to mark this guy down as 150. Not really going to worry about it right now. Um, this is one of the reasons that I always suggest making characters... Uh, that the GM make characters with the players whenever possible. Especially if the GM knows the game better than the players do. Um, they can, they can help smooth out a lot of these problems. GURPS, even with the templates, there is a little bit of math involved. And I think I screwed up somewhere when I was copying something around here because I'm coming up two points lower than I think I should be. Um... But, uh... What I'm going to do is I'm going to spend uh, I'm just going to spend an extra point on what is called uh, spending ca uh, points for cash um, because in after the end you only start out with five hundred dollars worth of gear um, and then you're allowed to trade points for cash. Um, And each point that you spend on cash gets you only another $250. So I'm going to spend that one point on cash. And, uh, I'm going to have a total starting gear of $750. And, um, that may sound like it's still a lot, but a lot of the stuff that, um, so... After the end assumes that society sort of settles out at what GURPS calls tech level four, which is the uh, equivalent of like um, the Renaissance or the age of sale where, you know, you've got like um, gunpowder weapons like flintlocks and such. Um, but nothing, nothing more advanced than that. And so in any equipment that you have that's from a, a higher technological period, it's cost that it would normally have had in the appropriate setting gets multiplied uh, by two for each tech level higher than four that it is. So anything that's uh, tech level six, which is roughly the world wars, uh, um, or it's, like 
World War One more than than World War Two. Um, that'll get multiplied by four. Um, anything is tech level seven, which is like uh, World War Two uh, through like the nineteen eighties is uh, doubled again. Um, tech level eight would be doubled again, and so on. Um, so like a modern MRE, uh, meal ration, uh, costs $80 for one MRE because, um, the book that it was originally in assumed that it would cost $5 for one, but then you're multiplying it by 16 because it's four tech levels higher than the average. So I'm going to go through this $750 pretty darn quick. Um, first thing I know I want to do is get some uh, weapons and armor. Um, and because this, I, I, I up this uh, guy's strength a bit, um, he can carry a little bit more uh, than he could before which will be good for uh, lugging around some of the more he some of the heavier more primitive equipment that I'm probably going to only just be able to afford um, I know that I want a, um, a, a knife And the idea is that um, in modern times, uh, not uh, uh, bladed weapons are uh, higher quality than the default, um, because uh, metallurgy and 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 metalworking techniques are just just more advanced. Um, but they're they're so they just get the quality increased for the same price. So I'm going to want this. I, I want to say that this guy has found a, a, a pristine, you know, a good knife from just, you know, at the, uh, when, um, the apocalypse happened. Uh, so I want it to be what's called a uh, fine quality. Um, And, uh, so, but because we're assuming that this is, uh, tech level four, I'm going to have to pay for it instead of just getting it for free. So, um, a, a small knife is normally $30. Um, in order to have it at fine quality, now here's the thing, um, does it count as a sword class weapon? I don't think it does. You know what, let's just, let's just say he has a, 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 a knife made by somebody uh, his, one of his contemporaries so he just has a normal uh small knife for thirty dollars and then for armor i'm going to be looking at the low-tech armor tables The one option that they give in after the end is for cheap equipment. Um, and especially in the case of armor, it may be worth uh, looking at higher tech level, but cheaply maintained uh, armor, uh, for, especially for characters that have more money than this guy does. Um, 
but I think I just like the idea of this guy being in a, a, a buff coat, which is a, a long leather coat. Um, cause that gives a little bit of protection, uh, over most of the body. Um, it gives two points of DR, uh, damage resistance, um, over the body, which is the torso and the groin, as well as, um, the limbs. Um, and that costs two hundred and ten dollars. Um, uh, and he's gonna have a uh, he's gonna have a cloth cap for a little bit of protection on the head for five dollars. He's going to have some cloth gloves just to just to give a little bit of protection on the hands when he's digging through ruins for $15. And I'm going to give him some nice boots for some protection on his feet. And those are going to cost eighty dollars so as you can see that money is already flying away I'm already at 340 out of the 750 that I that I started with um Clean water is important in the wasteland. Keeps you from getting sick and whatnot. Keeps you hydrated. Um, I'm going to I'm going to actually spring for a full a, 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 a actual canteen if I can from before the end times. Um, Excuse me, sorry. Uh, so that's a tech level five item that cost that would normally cost uh, ten dollars, but because it's tech level five, it's double that, uh, and it holds uh, a quart of water, um, which, if I want it to be clean, there's actually a monetary cost. Uh, it's one dollar per pint so a quart is two pints I had to check my conversion on that because I can never remember off the top of my head So that's another two dollars on top of that. Um, I'm gonna say that he's got a couple of uh, a couple of days worth of canned food. So three meals a day. Let's say he's got four days, um, and it's two dollars a can. And one pound a can, so 12 cans, that's $24 and 12 pounds. Um, uh, I'm going to get him a backpack. A small backpack costs $60. but that will hold 40 pounds of gear and salvage. I'm going to give him some useful stuff to put in there. So a roll of duct tape. Uh, very handy. That's going to run 
uh, $4 because it's, uh, duct tape gets introduced in GURPS terms at tech level six. So a roll of duct tape normally listed at a dollar gets multiplied by four for the tech level difference. The idea is that things are available at varying tech levels, even in the apocalypse, but their value in trade is determined by how advanced they are. Um, I'm going to buy him a multi-tool, like a, like a Leatherman, just so he has something useful, like a little knife and things. Um, and that runs $100, because it's a tech level 5 invention, and it normally lists for $50, so that's the math. Brings me up to five hundred and thirty dollars that I've spent, so I have two hundred and twenty dollars left. Um, I don't have to spend all of this. Um, but I do want to spend a little bit more. Um, so I'm going to look at his skills again. He's not a lock picker. Um, a lot of like drugs and things are, uh, very expensive cause they're, they're high tech and very useful. I'm going to get him a set of, uh, wire cutters just for like cutting through fences and things which is And I'm going to get him, give him a set of uh, bolt cutters for cutting off padlocks. Because like I said, it's not a lock picker. That's $120. Which brings me up to $710 spent. So I'm just going to say that he has... So after the end, assumes that people don't use money anymore. They use bullets as their trade, uh, trade good. Um, and, uh, pistol cartridges are $5 each. So I'm just going to give him eight pistol cartridges. It abstracts away things like, uh, caliber, um, for specific weapons and just says pistols use pistol cartridges, rifles use rifle cartridges and so on. Um, and the default is a, uh, $5, uh, pistol cartridge, so I'm giving him eight pistol cartridges to use up the last $40 that I had to spend. So there we go. Uh, aside from some, um, some math problems, because I'm still getting over a cold and I'm kind of tired, uh, we have a 150-ish point, uh, post-apocalyptic scavenger with a backpack full of stuff. Bunch of cans of food rattling around with some some bullets. Um, thanks for, for watching this uh, impromptu episode of Let's Make a Character. Um... I am going to be try I'm going to plan on moving the live stream um, earlier in the week. Friday nights, I know, are not the best viewing time for a lot of people. So I'm thinking of moving to Tuesdays in the future. Um, I will probably, in that case, be running polls more toward the weekend. Um, so if you want to be... Uh, if you want to see those polls and be able to respond to them, 
Uh, I put them on Twitter. I'm at Paul Stefko. I also put them on Google Plus. You can find me there. I'm Paul Stefko there. Um, and you can vote. Technically, you can vote in both places. Um, I don't mind if people double vote that way. Um, if you like the show, please click the buttons that indicate that you like the show. Um, and if you really like the show and want to help support it, you can find me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Paul Until next time, I just want to say thank you again, and I will see you later. Bye. <laughs>